Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 3 of a series of videos I'm doing about the minimum data set you need to obtain in order to perform an echocardiogram. So in this video I'm going to show you all the minimum data set for the parasternal short axis views. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. As you know, there is different segments you can obtain from the parasternal short axis view. So first, I'm going to show you all the minimum data set you need to obtain from the parasternal short axis view at the left ventricular apical level. After obtaining the parasternal short axis view at the left ventricular apical level, the first thing you have to do is a visual assessment of the left ventricular regional wall motion. At this level, you can only see apical segments of different left ventricular walls, so assess for any regional wall motion abnormalities of the apical anterior segment, apical lateral segment, apical inferior segment and apical septal segment. Now let's move to the parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle or middle level. Do the same as you did with the previous view. Obtain a parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle or middle level and do a visual assessment of the left ventricular regional wall motion. In this view, we can only see the middle segments of different left ventricular walls, so assess for any regional wall motion abnormalities of the mid-anteroseptal segment, the mid-anterior segment, mid-anterolateral segment, mid-inferolateral segment, mid-inferior segment, and mid-inferoseptal segment. In this view, we can also visualize the right ventricle, so do a visual assessment of the middle apical portion of the right ventricle. Also, you can do a visual assessment of the pericardium. At this level, you can also look for any septal defects. Using color flow Doppler, it's very helpful here to assess the integrity of the left ventricular septum. Also, you can use M mode to assess the left ventricle. M mode of the left ventricle can be taken at this level to assess the wall motion and to measure the diastolic and systolic diameter of the left ventricle, the diastolic and systolic diameter of the septum and posterior wall, and the estimated ejection fraction by teach holes method. Now let's move to the parasternal short axis view at the mitral valve level. After obtaining the parasternal short axis view at the mitral valve level, do a visual assessment of the left ventricular regional wall motion. At this level, we can only see basal segments of the left ventricle, so assess for any regional wall motion abnormalities of the basal anteroseptal segment, the basal anterior segment, the basal anterolateral segment, the basal inferolateral segment, the basal inferior segment, and the basal inferoseptal segment. Now perform a visual assessment of the right ventricle and the pericardium. This is a very good view to do a visual assessment of the mitral valve anatomy. Analyze the leaflet morphology, the leaflet thickness and the leaflet excursion. <laughs> 
Place the color flow Doppler over the mitral valve to assess for and identify the origin of regurgitation. You can also use M mode at this point to assess the mitral valve. M mode of the mitral valve can be taken at this level to assess the leaflet excursion. Next, we have the parasternal short axis view at the great vessels level. First, obtain your parasternal short axis view at the great vessels level. Then, you have to do a visual assessment of all the structures visualized in this view. Analyze what do you think about the left atrium, right atrium, interatrial septum, right ventricular outflow tract, tricuspid valve, pulmonary valve, aortic valve, pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery branches, and pericardium. After you do a global visual assessment, you can start to analyze each structure individually. You can start with the interatrial septum. Do a visual assessment of the interatrial septum. Then use color flow Doppler over the interatrial septum to assess for transseptal flow. A zoomed image is recommended and color flow Doppler scale may be reduced to identify PFO flow. Now start with the assessment of the aortic valve. A zoomed image of the valve is recommended and perform a qualitative assessment of cusps morphology, thickness and excursion. Now place color flow Doppler over the aortic valve to assess for and identify the origin of aortic regurgitation. It's also recommended a zoomed image of the aortic valve with color flow Doppler. M mode across the aortic valve can be taken at this level to assess the aortic valve aperture and closure, the aortic root diameter, the right ventricular outflow tract diameter and the left atrial diameter. You can also perform a color M mode assessment across the aortic valve. Color M mode across the aortic valve can be taken at this level to assess for regurgitation. Now let's assess the right ventricular outflow tract. At this level, you can visually assess the right ventricular outflow tract structure and function, and you can also measure the right ventricular outflow tract one and two diameter. Using pulse wave Doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract you can obtain the pulmonary velocity acceleration time and the right ventricular outflow tract VTI. Let's continue with the pulmonary valve and pulmonary artery assessment. Start with a visual assessment of the pulmonary valve anatomy, the main pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery branches. At this level, you can measure the main pulmonary artery diameter if needed. Now use color Doppler and assess the flow across the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery. In this view, you can use the continuous wave Doppler to assess the forward flow and also the regurgitation. When you assess the forward flow, 
you can measure the peak pulmonary velocity and gradients. Now, to grade the regurgitation, you can first visually assess the jet density and then measure the peak velocity, the end of diastolic velocity and the pressure half time of the regurgitation. Now let's move to the tricuspid valve and do a visual assessment of the leaflet's morphology, the leaflet's thickness and the leaflet's excursion. Use color Doppler to assess the color flow across the tricuspid valve. And to finalize, use continuous wave Doppler across the tricuspid valve. Assess the tricuspid regurgitation density and contour of signal and measure the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity. Now I'm going to show you on a video one by one all the measurements you need to obtain of the parasternal short axis views as part of the minimum dataset. Let's start with the short axis view at the apical level and assess for any regional wall motion abnormalities of the apical segments. Now do the same here and assess for any motion abnormalities of the middle segments of the left ventricle. At this level, you can use color Doppler to assess the integrity of the left ventricular septum and to look for any ventricular septal defects. Use M mode across this view and measure the diastolic and systolic diameter of the left ventricle, septum and posterior wall and obtain an estimated ejection fraction by Tichholz method. Next is the short axis view at the mitral valve level. Assess the anatomy of the mitral valve, also the right ventricle and the pericardium. Now use color Doppler and place it over the mitral valve to assess for and identify the origin of the mitral valve regurgitation. When you finish the color flow assessment, place the cursor across the mitral valve and obtain a name mode of the mitral valve. Visually assess the mitral valve leaflet excursion and motion. Now let's move to the parasternal short axis view at the great vessels level. And careful, visually assess every structure individually. Now place the color Doppler over the pulmonary valve and pulmonary artery and assess the blood flow across the pulmonary valve. After you have assessed visually the main pulmonary artery, you can take this opportunity to measure the main pulmonary artery diameter if you need to. Now continue with the forward flow assessment. Using continuous wave Doppler across the pulmonary valve, measure the peak velocity and peak gradient of the pulmonary valve. Now let's assess the regurgitation. With continuous wave Doppler you can measure the peak velocity of the pulmonary regurgitation. You can visually assess the regurgitant jet density and the contour. Also, as you can see, at this level with continuous wave Doppler you can measure the pulmonary regurgitation end of diastolic velocity as you can see in this picture. And to finalize, you could also measure the pulmonary regurgitation pressure half time or PHT. Now let's move to the next structure. After you have finished the visual assessment of the right ventricular outflow tract,
you can measure the right ventricular outflow tract one diameter and the right ventricular outflow tract two diameter. Now use pulse wave Doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract. In order to obtain the right ventricular outflow tract VTI. At this point, if you need to, you can also measure and obtain the pulmonary velocity acceleration time. Now that we finish the assessment of the pulmonary valve, let's move to the assessment of the aortic valve. M mode across the aortic valve can be taken at this level in order to visually assess and measure the RVOT, the aortic root, the aortic valve aperture enclosure and the left atrium. Now obtain a zoomed view of the aortic valve and visually assess the cusps morphology, thickness and excursion. Use color Doppler to assess for any regurgitation and to identify the origin of the regurgitation. You can also use color M mode. Color M mode across the aortic valve can be taken at this level to assess the regurgitation. Now do a visual assessment of the interatrial septum. A zoomed image is always recommended to assess the interatrial septum integrity. Use color Doppler to assess for transseptal flow and reduce the scale to identify any PFO flow. Now place the color flow Doppler over the tricuspid valve and visually assess for any tricuspid regurgitation. Use continuous wave Doppler to obtain any tricuspid regurgitation flow and measure the tricuspid regurgitation peak velocity if needed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye.